Look at the father's response. My son says, you're always with me. Everything I have is yours. He says, we had to celebrate. We had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive. He is lost and now he is found. Can I have a good amen for the reading of the word? I love this story. I love this story. I want to get right to this. Here's how you sum up this story. The story of the prodigal son is one of the greatest comeback stories of all time. It shows just how far one can come back from, from the mud and the muck to recovery and restoration of the father. If you wonder, I've been too deep in the mud. I've got too much of the muck of pain, rejection, addiction, sin, craziness. Why? There's too much on me to come back to the father. This story tells us that with the mud and the muck, you can come back to the father and with a repentant heart and a heart towards the father, you can receive recovery and restoration from God almighty. It's just proof. It's there right in scripture. There's so many things about this story that I just like to think about. One of the things that always jumps out at me every time I read this story, I don't know why this boy wants to leave home. I've looked at it a hundred times. Why did he leave his home? What was going on? What caused him to one day make these demands upon his dad? What was going on? I've got a lot of thoughts and I've got my theories and and my ideas of why he gathered his stuff and rolled out the front door and slammed the door behind him. And his dad probably pleaded with him, son, don't go, son, don't go. He still walked down that road away from his dad. I don't know why he did that, but guess what? I don't know why we do some of the things we do. I don't know why I do some of the things I do. Who knows why we drift? Who knows why we slip? Who knows why we fail? Who knows why we walk away? Who in the world knows why we give up? You know what I found out? There's never a good answer to the why question. You can live your whole life trying to figure out why did I do that? Why did I say that? Why did I respond that way? Why is my marriage in this spot? Why is my family like this? Why am I acting this way? We can go over and over and over and guess what? There's not a good answer. We just know that he leaves. We do have a description of what happens when he walks away from the father. We know the results. The results when he walks away from the father and the Bible is very clear is a reckless life that ends up in ruin. And you know what I found out? That when you begin to live a reckless life away from the Father, it will always end in ruin. I think about the dad here. It's enough about the son. I look at the dad. After two days, he wonders, is he coming home? After two months, is he coming home? Is it two years? So many things probably remind him. Every day his dad is counting each day. He looks on the horizon every day and he wonders, is my son coming home? I'm sure just like we do, there's things that remind us of people that are no longer in our life. I know my daughter went to college last year. You know, those first couple loads of laundry, there's a t-shirt that's left. There's a lone sock that shows up. I think about her foot and, and her being off at college and where is she today? Or I walk by her room and look in her room and, and with her, she has a lifestyle, a life-size Justin Bieber cutout. And so I'll look and I'll say, Justin, where's McCall? Where is she? And many times I'll walk by there at three in the morning and I'll see just, ah! oh gosh, it's just Justin. I can whoop him. It's not Bruce Lee. But things make you wonder about people that are no longer in your life. I'm sure so many people tried to comfort this dad. He's gone. He's no good son anyway. Look at how he treated you. Look at how he hurt you. Look at how he embarrassed you. Look at what he left. Look how he left. We hear stories of him in the far country. He's brought shame on your name. Give up on him. Let him go. 
the whispers. He's an embarrassment. He's hurt you. But even though other people give up on him, this dad never stops watching the horizon because he believes that every single day his boy is going to come home. And you know what happens? Just like in all of our life, the pig slop will never satisfy your soul. It never satisfies his soul. So he comes to himself and the Bible says he decides to come back. And when he comes back, we see this picture of his dad running. It's an awesome picture in scripture of a dad running, smothering his son with hugs and kisses out in the field. Now just put on pause for a second because I think what is so amazing here is the scene of his older dad, must have been an older dad running full on to embrace him. I don't know about you, but it, there's nothing pretty about a grown man running full on. <laughs> I'm talking about an older man. You know what I'm talking about? When an older man runs, things break. People get hurt. Children are scared. People, teenagers are frightened. And if it's your dad running and you're a teenager, you are forever embarrassed. You know, it's just something about a dad running and, and it's just, it's everywhere. It's just, it's all out of place. It's zigzag. It's knocking things over. It's just, it's scary. I remember several years ago, we went to Disney World um, with our children. They were smaller, Dylan and McCall. And so Dylan has Dylan and she sends me and her dad, uh, who was in his mid sixties to take McCall on the um, monorail, little small monorail in Tomorrowland, Fantasyland. It's a little small thing. And so the last thing she says is, do not lose my daughter. That's our first one. Well, we got this, man. I'm a grown man, grown man. I got her. So we bring her over, go on the monorail, riding around. Oh my God. Oh, there's Fantasyland. There's a, you know, the little GE. Hello. Oh, what are you doing? A little dog. So we're doing all this kind of stuff. We go through, we get done. We come down the escalators. There's a zillion people in Tomorrowland, like going, all of a sudden there's this big group with flags. Come this way, come on. Oh, the backpacks, the same color shirts on it. I get a little distracted by it all. Uh, that's probably shocking. And, uh, and so I go one way and I let go of her hand because I know, you know, he, granddad's got her. He's more responsible than me. And he lets go of her and we're about 30 seconds and we meet back on the other side of the crowd. I was like, Brother Wayne, you got my call? I don't have her. How many of us at that moment, it's instant panic. It's not a gradual panic. It's not a three or four minute panic. It's, you're not charging the battery trying to, uh, it's like all of a sudden, what? Where is she? And we just, what? I go one way, he goes another way. It's two minutes, three minutes. We're, I see him, where is she? I don't see, I don't see her either. We're looking, every, our daughter is missing in Tomorrowland, Disney World. So five minutes go by, I run over to this concession stand where people are in line in these like little walkway trough things or metal things. People are in line trying to get an $85 burger, just trying to get something to eat. Second mortgage of their house for a turkey leg. I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, it's, I mean, they're showing you the magic, buddy. I'm telling you right now, it's bringing on the magic. And so I stand up on those rails and grab two strangers by the shoulders. I'm just like, like excuse me, hold me up. Hold me up. <laughs> I look up and see my father-in-law, who's about 63, 64 years old, on a dead, full-on sprint. Just... <laughs> There's like alarms going off on Disney, senior adult running. <laughs> and I take off running, we meet. McCall is walking out of tomorrow, just heading out, crying. Oh God! Brother Wayne's crying, I'm oh God! Don't tell your mother. Don't tell your mother. I'll buy you that ice cream. I got $800 right now, I'll buy you that ice cream. Because <laughs> when your child is gone, your heart, your heart is gone. He finds his son, he comes home. The son has a speech ready, he says, shh. And I want you to hear this, because this is for somebody today. 
The dad basically has provides this party and this feast. He's basically saying to the son, shh, I don't want to hear the speech. Let me treat you like you never left because you never left my heart. You may have left the house, but you never left my heart. Let me treat you that way. The party begins and we always know there's a side note to every story because there's not only one lost son in this scene, there's two lost sons. 